So where does that leave our colonists after all of this? Is there a better way for them to organize their society? It kind of seems like I might be saying no, because I've spent this whole course building up and then shooting down all these different ideas. Will they use a central computer and just bypass markets completely? Here's a bunch of problems with that approach. Should they just use free markets? Won't that give them just as good a result without those problems? Yes, except no, there's all these problems. Maybe they can intervene and fix all those problems? Well, if they can't fix them all, then they are going to have a hard problem because any time they intervene on one, they're going to have to gather a bunch of information and sort of see what's the effect going to be on the economy. And there's not going to be a universal guidance that they can use. They're going to have to spend a lot of time and energy solving all their problems. So does that mean that they can't really do any better than we've done down here on Earth? Are they just going to replicate the same systems that we have? I think that there's sort of two more hopeful lessons that you could take away from this course. One is that you can see why the way we're doing things down here, there's a reason why we do things this way. And there's like, you know, there are justifications for a lot of the ways societies run. We don't have necessarily better options on the table. At the same time, it's important to recognize that there's huge differences in how well people implement kind of this mixed economy approach, how well different governments intervene and correct market failures, and how equitable the distribution of property rights is at the outset uh, in determining kind of outcomes that everybody's happy with. So I think these uh, colonists do have the option of doing you know, they can at least do as well as the best run places here. They can learn from those. And they have the opportunity, unlike most of us, to rethink that initial distribution of property rights. Because a lot of people think the market would be really fair if everyone had an equal opportunity at the outset and had kind of the right allocation of resources. And then in terms of when there's un when there's all these market failures, which there will be, uh, there are the, the, these problems, you know, there are examples of governments today that do better and worse jobs of correcting those. The second kind of hopeful lesson is if they want to go a different route, if they want to implement sort of one of these more utopian things, I hope this course has at least given you an appreciation of the challenges that need to be solved if you're going to go that route. And it may be that those challenges are solvable. Okay. I can't say, I don't know. Uh, but if you don't know they're there, then you're going to just have problems. Okay. So anyway, that's what I hope you kind of take away from this course is a framework for thinking through how we organize our society's allocation of resources. And if we're going to try and do it better, what does that look like? And what kind of challenges does, do we face? If you like this course, uh, I designed it, uh, for a class I teach at Iowa state university. If, however, you are not at Iowa State University because, and you have found this course somehow, and you liked it, or you have other comments, I would be interested in hearing from you. This is my email address, mclancy at iastate.edu. Uh, feel free to reach out and tell me if you enjoyed it or, or anything. Anyway, I hope you all liked it. And those of you who are taking it because you're at Iowa State, uh, thanks everybody and good luck.